Good morning, Sunrise Community Church. How are you today? I'm so glad you seem a little bit more spry, not great, but a little bit more spry than the first service. That, that weather's, is that clearing up out there a little? I mean, it wasn't raining, but kind of dreary. But it's not going to be dreary in here. We got some great reasons to praise the Lord this morning. And uh, as we go into our first song, I was uh, thinking about the book of 1 Timothy. And it's pretty cool how in the, in the first chapter, um, towards the beginning of the, of the book, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he, he says this, this phrase here. He says, he gives glory to God. He says, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's chapter one. And then in chapter six, at the end of the book, he's wrapping it up and he's saying, so you know what to do, Timothy, you got this. Just remember to stay on target, stay with God. And then it's like he gets distracted because he said the word God. He said the name of God. And it's like he just gets caught up in this worship now. And he says, God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Would you stand and join with us in singing praise to our amazing God?
there's no one else, Lord, no one like you. And God, there are so many uh, words that we could try to use to describe you or to worship you, but nothing truly encapsulates who you are on its own. But God, we love to try.
sing them back, sing them back to you. your name up. We worship you, God. You alone are worthy. And we are grateful to be in your presence here this morning. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, before you are seated, would you turn around and find someone that you don't know yet? Maybe walk across an aisle, share your name, get to know their name. Even if it's someone whose name you think you should know, but you don't, be brave. Ask them. Ask them their name. Oh, that's good. All right. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's an uh, amazing Sunday morning. And one of the things that we love to do at Sunrise Community Church uh, is when a family comes together and says, we want to uh, dedicate our children to the Lord. And uh, this morning we have a child dedication. I'd like to invite the Brady family uh, to come on up here and join me. And uh, we're going to meet Liam right over here. Look at that guy. He's growing. And uh, here, just come right on over here. And this is Jacob and I believe Ashley. Hello. And are you Avery? Are you the big sister? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, hi, Liam. How are you doing today? Can you say anything? Hi. There we go. All right. Oh, look at that. Now, were you out uh, looking for Christmas trees? That looks very familiar to me. And sometimes those days are very painful. Uh, it's true. It can be, right? Yeah. Okay. You're, you're with me. But you got a good tree and, that's, that's a, and you got some good pictures. Um, hey, tell us a little bit about what, um, what are your hopes? What are your desires for uh, who Liam would become? Our hopes and our desires for Liam is that his life would be blessed and protected by God and that he would be blessed with discernment by the Holy Spirit for uh, what God's plans and um, to know right from wrong and um, that he would never stray from the Lord. Yeah and that he would turn to family and friends and church when he is in need yeah. and that God is uh, always know that for him to know that God is always with him. Oh, God is always with him. That's uh, <laughs> that is a, that is a prayer. I pray for my kids just about every day. Uh, you've mentioned Joshua one nine as uh, as a verse that we would love to really just uh, set the tone for that today. And so, uh, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, Liam. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And we pray that you'll always know that. Um, let's pray for Liam right now and see how we'll do this. Pastor Rich used to hold all the babies, but I don't know, you know. We'll get close by. Liam, can I, uh, there we go. Let's pray for Liam. And if you'd like to just reach out your hands as a church body, um, as we lift him before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you uh, for Liam. Thank you for bringing him into this earth and uh, putting him into a family that just loves him, that cares for him, that wants uh, the absolute best for him. And more than anything, they want him to know you and to follow you. And so we dedicate him today to you, uh, that he would be set aside as one uh, 
that would be uh, drawn to you, Lord, that he would uh, seek your wisdom. We pray that he would desire you with his whole life, that he would um, seek the church, Lord, and uh, desire to be part of the church and know this as a place of refuge, uh, but also a place where he can know his Savior. And uh, we pray that you will give Jacob and Ashley wisdom as they raise him, discernment, and uh, and may they just, uh, may this whole family uh, really reflect the love of Jesus in their lives. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And Liam, we'll see you later. Right. Well, this is a, uh, this is a fun morning. Uh, we just keep on going because I'm going to invite my friend Jason Chappelle to come join me here for a moment. I've got one for you. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, this is the, the announcement section of the service. And uh, we decided to have the Jason and Cliff show uh, this morning. Jason is in from the Philippines. Yeah, I flew all the way here to give the announcements today. I'm excited for this. Perfect. And so we're going to do announcements together, tag team, see how it goes. Um, coming up here, we have uh, a connection with you. This is pretty cool yeah. coming up in a couple of weeks. So in two weeks, uh, let me tell you, you really need to go to this lunch. It's at noon on the 28th. Uh, please go visit Joshua and Ann Benavides. Joshua is my mentor. He's uh, the leader of ER Asia in the Philippines and his wife, Ann Benavides, leads a uh, ministry, Golden Hands. Um, please come get to know them. Uh, embrace them like you would embrace me. They're my family. So uh, please give them a big sunrise hug for me because uh, I can't be there. I'll be in the Philippines while they're here with you. So, um, yeah, please ah, come on out. That's right. And same, okay, so the same day, uh, we also, before that, during second service, are going to start our two-week Life at Sunrise class. And that is, uh, ultimately, that's the pathway to membership at Sunrise. But it's also a great way. If you've been attending for a little while and you say, I'd really like to know, uh, the, the depth of this church and, and what goes, what happens behind the scenes and some of the history and even the theology uh, and so on to get to know this church a little more intimately. This is a great way to do that. Uh, also, like I said, it's our pathway to membership. Uh, so you can sign up at the table that's out there in the lobby, or you can do that at our website, uh, sunrise.church. But that starts on the 28th and continues on to May 5th. Okay, Jason, tonight... At six o'clock, there's something going on. Who loves skating? Yeah. So we got a family skate night and we want everyone to come out six to 8 p.m. at Roller King. That's it. And uh, please come join us. Uh, Cliff, come join Cliff. I have a, I have a dinner planned <laughs> yes, with my family. Sorry, I won't, won't be skating. I uh, probably wouldn't be pretty to see anyways. But uh, if you got moves uh, or you don't, please come skate with us. <laughs> That's <laughs> so good. Um, all right, let's see. Let's, well, yeah, let's do Falls Like Do. That sounds like a good one. Mother, daughter, girlfriend tea is coming up on the 27th. That's a Saturday. Ladies, this one's for you. If you have not secured your tickets yet, they are available in the lobby. You can pick those up uh, after the service today. So again, coming up in just under two weeks on the 27th. And uh, that's it. Wow, well done. Good job. We yeah. got time to spare. We have time to spare. So let's spend it like this. Jason. Tell me about life in the Philippines these days and uh, what God's up to in your ministry there. Awesome. So when I left in 2021, after that uh, six-month scare of never getting back to the Philippines, uh, God, God had established a new call in my life to lead a new ministry called the Dream Centers. And that's an after-school program in which we use educational reinforcement to really get in the lives of the students and their families to share the gospel uh, with the families and hopefully see lives changed yeah. with the love of Christ. So for the past three years, uh, we've learned what a dream center was by the initial launchers in South Africa. Now, I know there's a dream center here in L.A. Uh, we're not related, but we like the name. So we took it and called our place the dream center because... Yeah. We want these kids to dream big dreams. And so I love it. Um, 
And copyrights don't apply. Like I, I hope no. they don't apply because we're in a different hemisphere. Hemisphere. No, 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 no. Uh, all of our regions are outside of America, so we're not stealing anything, I don't think. And if we are, ho hopefully it's not recorded. <laughs> I, know, I know we have an right, online see, presence. Uh, let's so. see, we didn't plan this part. Uh, let's talk about Melissa. When you left here uh, for the first time to head off to the Philippines, you know, uh, Jason was, if you don't know, Jason has been a part of this church for a long time. Uh, when April and I arrived here uh, back in 2014, he was volunteering with our youth. I called him the bouncer because uh, he would make sure that the kids that were you know, going to go out and sneak around and do bad things would, you know, be under control. And, uh, but he discipled a lot of young people here, uh, went to camp with us. You'd go to Mexicali with us and and then you headed off to the Philippines a single man yes I did but not so much anymore no nope. tell us about Melissa tell you tell us about what's going on with the two of you so uh, God blessed me with an amazing woman uh, that has been uh, a great helpmate for me uh, somebody that helps me in my walk daily uh, someone that challenges me to be a better man a better husband and a better leader and uh, we are excited for the next step in our ministry together. Uh, God's called us to couples ministry in our, our church. Uh, we're in a leadership track under the, the leadership of the church. And they've got us um, sometimes coming up and exhorting giving or speaking in front of the service. Uh, Never, never preaching yet, but I'm sure that You'll might come someday. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're excited for what God has for us. Uh, we love our small groups. Uh, we love the growth that we're getting and the new small groups that are bouncing up. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're just happy in ministry together. Uh, and we are, and we truly are happy for you. We're yeah. thrilled for you. Uh, we're going to pray for you uh, here in just a moment. I'm going to invite Mark Bennett, the chair of our mission commission, uh, to come up. As Mark's coming up, uh, just want to remind you, for those of you, uh, you might be here for the first time. You want a little more information about the church, about the Chappelles, uh, what's going on in their lives. Uh, we have a neat hallway right over here with pictures of all of our missionaries uh, that the church supports, as well as ways that you can be praying for them and contact them as well. Um, and then also we'd encourage you, uh, if you're here in the room with us today and you need prayer, please fill out one of the prayer cards. You can drop that off at the information counter. And also over there, you'll, you're able to uh, uh, meet some good friends that will give you a little gift if you're here for the first time. So we'd love to offer that to you as well. If you're here online, I missed all of this part at the beginning. Um, if you're here online, thank you for joining us. We're glad you're here as well. And uh, just go to Sunrise dot church slash welcome. Let us know you're here. Let us know how we can be praying for you. All right, Mark, would you be awesome. willing to pray I, for I, us? I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward right now as well as we uh, receive this morning's offer. Great. I'll say uh, if you want to meet Jason after the service, we'll be at a table yeah. out in the lobby. You right can do there. that. You can get and some stickers. There you go. Get stickers. Get the, um, or tomorrow night, there's an address there where there will be a gathering. You can hear a little bit more about his ministry. Perfect. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of standing together here and being together as a body of Christ, um, lifting up Jason and Melissa to you. Thank you for the call that you've placed on them. Thank you for their obedience to you. Father, I pray that you would protect them. I pray that you would speak boldly through their lives. I pray that you would bless Jason as he is here. Um, give him safe travels, give him time of rest and restore, oh God, pray, pray that as he goes back, um, you will take this time and it will multiply in the ministry that you have called them to. You are an awesome God. We thank you for the gifts that will be given this morning. We thank you for the obedient hearts that are represented in this room to see what you want to do, God, in this body and through this body in our community and around the world. You are an awesome God. We love you and we praise you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today is the second week after Easter, and we get to continue worshiping our risen King. In fact, we're going to sing a song right now that we introduced on Good Friday, and we actually altered one of the lyrics in that song because I didn't want to sing about the resurrection on Good Friday. But today, we get to sing, 
he is risen from the grave. So you can sit and listen, or you can stand and join in singing as you catch on to the melody. <clears throat> worship you for what you have done. We thank you and we praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, hello. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. We were thinking about Easter several weeks ago, obviously. And, and we, actually months ago, and we looked up towards Easter and we led towards Easter with the series of statements that Jesus would say, I am, and what, what, who he was, right? And we did that all the way uh, into Easter. And we got to Easter, and as we gave that message, it, it seems like the ultimate thing. It's, it is finished. Christ has done his work. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We all get excited and we walk out and then we come back at Christmas. 
And yet, there is so much more. And as Luke and I were talking through this, he knows that, that a book I get really excited about in the uh, Bible is the book of Acts. He said, Cliff, what if, we, what if we come right out of Easter and head into the book of Acts? And I said, oh, this is going to be good. He says, good, I'm going on vacation. You're going to do it. And... Um, <laughs> which is exactly what is happening. Luke and Sarah are on vacation right now. Uh, so you are stuck with me, but we're going to move our way from the Easter story into what happened next. And that's why this series is called What Next? What else? What next? What is it? What now? There we go. What now? Yeah. Life after the resurrection. That's where we are. And uh, so I'd like you to join me, not in the book of Acts this morning, uh, but I'd like you to join me in the last chapter of the book of Luke, chapter 24. Um, and before we get there, I had one more thing to do with Luke's three minutes. <sighs> Thank you so much for coming out to the Hume Banquet on uh, Friday night. You showed up. Uh, yes, that's, thank you, John. Uh, you showed up and gave just, not even including buying tickets for the meal, over $15,000 uh, to help our students go to camp this summer. Uh, that is a big deal, especially in the economy that we live in, uh, where we can say that there is no camper left behind, uh, that nobody can use money as an excuse uh, to not be able to go to camp. I went back and I was looking and somebody, and I won't say names, but somebody donated a campership, a scholarship, so someone could go to Wagon Train and so that someone could go to Meadow Ranch, our junior high camp. Uh, just individually made that possible for two people to go to camp and so many many more of you gave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now let's get there. Luke chapter 24. Now, uh, I feel like this morning is full of lots of clarifications. I need to clarify something for you. It says up there, Luke 24, 45 through 49 ESV, English standard version. Well, this one's on me, Joe, it's not on you. This one's on me because I gave him all the scripture and I said it was in the ESV, but it's in the NIV on the uh, screen because I gave it all in the NIV. So I looked it up that way. And anyway, so we're in the NIV this morning, even though it says an ESV. And if you really want to have a conversation about the differences, we can talk later. Okay. The key here, though, is we're going to start with this, a little bit of context for you. Luke writes both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, okay? So it's really fun to read the Gospel of Luke right into the book of Acts because it's just a continuous flow. And, um, and so it starts right where he left off at the end of the book of Luke in the Gospel of Luke, and it takes us into the book of Acts. And I think it's important to look at it in light of all of Scripture together because if you start in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is really the story of God's work, of the work of God the Father, of Yahweh, okay? And that is the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit and Christ show up all throughout the Old Testament, but it really is that story of Yahweh. And then when you get into the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and as you're in the Gospels, you are getting the story of God the Son, Jesus Christ. And you get this the, the entire time about Jesus Christ on earth. And as we head into the book of Acts and the rest of the New Testament, we have the story of the church coming and doing what the church did, uh, through the power of God, the Holy Spirit. And so if God, the father is the star of the old Testament, uh, God, the son is the star of the gospels. Then God, the Holy Spirit is the star of acts and beyond. How about that? That's a fun way to read scripture, isn't it? And, uh, and so that sets a little bit of context for us as we, uh, as we read along. We know that Luke uh, was a doctor. We know that Luke uh, was uh, impeccable about detail. Uh, we know that he clearly laid out the story of Jesus in his gospel. Um, 
And we know that as he wrote the book of Acts, uh, that he talked about God choosing to use us, his church, God's church, to accomplish his work. Uh, and he, yet he leaves behind the Holy Spirit to, uh, to empower us to do his work. All right. So that's the end of the story right there. Now we're going to go through and uh, find out how we got there. We're in Luke chapter 24, verses 45 through 49 uh, at first here. Follow along. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. He told them, uh, okay, context again, Jesus has risen. He's walking around on earth right now. He keeps appearing to his disciples. And he had appeared to some of them on the road to Emmaus, which we talked about last week. And, uh, and so he's talking to them. He's telling these things. Verse 45, he opens their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You, and he's looking at his disciples as he says this, you are my witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. What's that? Holy Spirit, all right? We're gonna talk about that, not this week. All right, because we're gonna limit the Holy Spirit, all right. Just seeing if you're paying attention out there. He says, I am going to send what my father has promised, the Holy Spirit, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Okay, so he, he instructs them, stay. Stay right there. I, I'm going to leave. Stay right there. Verse 50. It says, when he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. So let's, let's uh, do a little bit of a geography lesson. If you're looking at the map of Jerusalem right now, you're looking at me. Jerusalem is, and this is north, the north is up. Um, on the right side of the city of Jerusalem is the Kidron Valley. And it runs uh, right there between Jerusalem and then over here to the east side uh, Yes, east side of Jerusalem. I'm having to do this backwards. It's kind of fun. And uh, over here to the east side is where you have the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, you have the Mount of Olives. And over there on the other side of the Mount of Olives, you have where Bethany is. So it's kind of a, a you know, a couple hours walk maybe uh, to get from Bethany to Jerusalem or back and forth. And uh, um, so Jesus is, is taking them out there to Bethany. And this is where this happens. He lifted up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continuously at the temple, praising God. And that's the end of the gospel of Luke. Jesus ascending into heaven. And as we, as we stop and we think about that for a moment, Think about the fact that the last time he left them, they were what we would call today a hot mess. It, it was disastrous. He was being led off to be crucified. His disciples were falling away left and right. They were falling asleep. They were denying him. The crowd was against them and everybody, it was a hot mess. Or as one of my friends describes, a dumpster fire. That was the last time he left them. Notice this time as he leaves them, they worshiped him, then they worshiped him. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy because they knew he really is who he was saying. And all those things he was saying now are starting to, to make sense. Oh, when he was talking about that, that's what he really meant? You mean, he, he is God. He, he is the Messiah. He, okay, I don't have to worry about him being gone. Because whatever he said is going to come true. We're good, all right? That's, that's the attitude that's happening here. And so they return to Jerusalem with great joy. And so now, please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1. 
And I love in, uh, in just this brief moment, Luke takes us right back there to that exact spot. And, uh, and takes us into, uh, gives us the picture of what's happening there yet again. In my former book, Theophilus, so he's writing to Theophilus, um, he says, I wrote all about Jesus, all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Notice just that little phrase right in there. I wrote about all that Jesus began to do. He doesn't talk about a completed work. He talks about a work that has begun. Meaning what we're getting ready to see here is as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Oh, I, I love first service just for that reason. I can't, I can't do that in second service. Um, but we're gonna find out the rest of the story that Jesus began a work in his 30 plus years on this earth but it's going to be faithfully completed after he has left. Okay, good. You got that, right? Okay. And he, uh, so after he was, until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Verse three, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. What's that gift? Okay, good. You're awake. You're paying attention. Excellent. And he says, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so right here in this little section in verses one through five, we, we find about uh, the things that Jesus kind of recaps, the things that he began to do, but he's saying, all right, now what I need you to do is to go back to Jerusalem and I want you to stick together Followers of Christ, stick together, hang out together, and wait. Now, if this was 42 days earlier, 43 days earlier, I have a feeling they would have had no clue and they would have been like, we can't wait. We can't wait. No, we're good. What, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to do it? What is it? No, but at this point... They just do it. They head back to Jerusalem having no idea. They truly don't know what's to come. You want to read ahead in Acts 1 and, the, and 2, you're going to see what's to come. And they, they have no clue what's getting ready to happen. But the thing that stands out to me in this moment is that they are going back there blindly this time. In a, in, in a sense. And just being told to wait. And so they do. They wait. How many times has God told us to wait? And we just sit there. Do we sit there with joy? Do we sit there with other brothers and sisters in Christ? Or do we do it alone? I don't know. So he tells them this. That you're going to, uh, and he says, in a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a word, I think, that sometimes we struggle with, baptized. Well, what does that mean? I, I, I've, I've struggled with that throughout my life. What is this baptism by water and baptism by the Holy Spirit? I think a, a great thing to do in this moment is understand that that word baptized literally means covered or enveloped. Okay, and so that's why when we baptize someone with water, that, that we go under the water and we lift them back up out of the water, we envelop them, we cover them, um, and, and it's very symbolic, right? Symbolic of, of a death to the old self and a raising up of the new self. That's, that's what baptism is, um, it's, and it's an enveloping, a covering. And he's saying, now follower of Christ, you're going to be your old self's dead and you're going to be raised up a new person controlled 
by the Holy Spirit, enveloped, filled with the Holy Spirit. It's great. It is so good, okay? So just keep that in your mind as a fun nugget. And so in verse 6, he says, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Well, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? <sighs> I was getting so excited that they got it. I was getting so excited, like, oh, suddenly everything Jesus had said up to this point made sense. But let's just accept the fact that these guys were human for a moment. And, and it was almost impossible for them to get out of their minds the idea of the Messiah being an earthly king the Messiah being one that would, would reign in an earthly manner over a political empire. And so their political aspirations uh, for the kingdom of Israel were still hanging out there in that hope. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. And, and we know that his kingdom is a heavenly kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. And boy, do we know today still uh, that, that Israel is a, is a nation that, that struggles um, to be accepted and, and struggles to, um, to have its place in this world. And, and, and even this, in this last two days, boy, could we be praying uh, for Israel and everything in the Middle East. And we continue to do so. But his disciples still couldn't help it, but looked back in that earthly mindset. Are you going you gonna to create this kingdom right here on this earth? Uh, to which he says this. It's not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority. So get that out of the way. It's none of your business. Doesn't matter. You can wait. Okay, you can deal with this. Because it's not going to be about an earthly kingdom. Just get that out of your mind for a second. So don't worry about that. And sometimes in our lives, we have to put some of these initial questions that we have to God aren't necessarily the right questions. You ever question God and you find yourself uh, asking, you know, God, when are you going to heal me? God, when are you going to make me not suffer anymore? God, when are you going to get rid of this person in my life? I haven't ever prayed that. Um, but he says, it's, it's just not for you to know the times and dates. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so Jesus is getting ready to leave them. He says, you're gonna get power you're going to have the Holy Spirit. I'm leaving, but you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, that part of the, the Trinitarian God that will indwell you and give you power and give you strength. And then you're going to be my witnesses right here in Jerusalem. Oh, no, no, hold on a second. You're also going to be my witnesses up, up to the north, okay, in, in Judea. And you're, no, we're going to go a little beyond that. You're going to go to those people you despise. You know, those Samaritans, you're going to be my witnesses in Samaria. Oh, no, it's not done. But wait, there's more. The rest of the world. And, and when you read the book of Acts, read it with that in your mindset. Because you're going to see Paul introduced and, and head out all throughout the Roman Empire. You're, you're going to see what we know today as Turkey just covered with churches. Um, God is going to do this amazing spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ through his people. And it was in just a few short years from that point. The thing I learned from this is never put a limit on God. Never limit it. Say, oh God... I, uh, I was talking to someone one time several years ago who thought, who, who said, I just can't see myself not in ministry at sunrise. And I looked at this young man and I said, oh, God has so much more for you than just sunrise. Like, like step out, 
step out of the boat a little bit and not to diminish Sunrise, but to give him a bigger picture. It says, God wants to use you, not just right here in this place, but God wants to use you in a workplace. God wants to use you out beyond, maybe in another state, maybe in another country. Never put limits on what God is going to do and how God can use you. Verse nine, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. And we all at this point sit there going, okay, was it a stairway? Was it an escalator? Was it an invisible escalator? Did he just poof, disappear? How I have no clue. This says... He was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him. So he ascends and, and it's, he's gone. He ascends to heaven and he is now gone from the earth for good. The physical Jesus Christ. People say they see him on clouds and different things and symbols that show up all, you know, right around the right time of the year. He shows up on a wall somewhere in a shadow. But the physical body of Jesus Christ leaves this earth. Uh, and at that point, there's, there's something interesting that happens. I, I was thinking about this and, and it hit me. When we talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, him rising from the dead, we talk about um, a Jesus that not only suffered and died, but then came back alive. And, and through that process, we receive salvation and sanctification and, and, and newness and, and uh, the hope of heaven someday, all those kinds of things. But without the ascension of Jesus Christ, okay? So without the resurrection, we just don't have a faith, period. Without the resurrection, it's a story of a guy that died. There's, there's no empty tomb. You know, the, uh, there are no lies being made up about disciples stealing him or anything like that. Uh, it's just a guy that, that suffered for his people and died and, and was put in a tomb. But with the resurrection... We have what we know today as Christianity, Jesus Christ, followers, salvation. But without the ascension, we don't have the church. Because as he ascended to heaven, he left behind his people to do his work. Now, even when I say those words, I get goosebumps. He left his people on this earth to do his work, to become his church through the power of his Holy Spirit. That is great news and scary all at the same time. You say, he left me to do his work? He does a way better job than I do. And he says, no, I, I'm, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to give you power. It's going to be up to you. You get to be my witnesses on this earth. As I look across this room, I see so many of you who are being his witnesses every day. Nicole, I'm going to pick on you right now. My wife got to hang out in Nicole Harshbarger's class this last week and watch her teach uh, in public school over here. First grade, right? And um, Nicole is a witness for Jesus Christ in her classroom to these first graders, wild six-year-olds uh, every day. And whether, even though she doesn't say the name of Jesus to them, she shows them Jesus every single day. So God has called her, right? <laughs> to be his hands and feet on this day and she can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how it works. And uh, when we figure that out, and we go out in boldness and confidence, knowing that I'm not talented, but God's gonna use me whether I like it or not, so I might as well just let him do that. Suddenly we can have confidence that he's doing the work 
and we are just his instruments. We are his tools. What a great privilege we have. And so as they are uh, intently looking up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, here come these guys again, right? Have we talked about this over the last several weeks? It always seems like these angels just show up uh, and scare us. Um, and and he, he's looking at them. He's like, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And there is just this glorious moment. Jesus has ascended. The disciples have been given their walking orders. And what are their walking orders? To walk on over to Jerusalem and hang out and wait. And next week, we're going to find out what happened after that. It's pretty cool. Uh, what do you do with this? So what? I got two questions for you on the so what. What should we do when Jesus doesn't seem to be with us? So Jesus uh, left his disciples, right, behind. And what did he say? Go hang out with the, the other disciples. You might not feel Jesus in your life every day. Stay around other believers. Keep other people encouraging you. You're not always going to feel him or sense his presence. But gathering in the uh, presence of other believers, uh, you are gathered with somebody else who is filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, you're in God's presence. You ever thought about that? So get together with his followers and pray and repeat the truth that he told us. Second question, what will you do with Christ's commands? And notice right before Jesus ascended, he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem. They obeyed. They didn't question him. They simply obeyed. So I ask, what does your obedience to Christ look like when he asks you to do something? In this case, he asked them to go to Jerusalem and to wait. Are you willing to go to Jerusalem when he says go? As we're going to see in the, the next several chapters, are you willing uh, to go to Samaria when he says go? Are you willing to go to the ends of the earth, Jason Chappelle, when he says go? I have another so what that I didn't put on the screen here. Um, and that is Jesus ascended to heaven and is no longer with us in his physical form. He left us behind to carry on his mission of taking the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, Sudamaria, and the ends of the earth. And the so what is, will you join him on this mission? It's a calling today. Will you join Christ on his mission to reach this world with his gospel's truth? The book of Acts is going to be a lot of fun over the next few weeks. Uh, the band's going to come back out. I'm going to pray and uh, we're going to continue on in our worship together. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for your word. And I thank you so much that... Uh, when the gospel's finished, that that wasn't the end of the story, that there was so much more that you were getting ready to do. And, uh, and so with that, Lord, um, we commit ourselves to you, to obedience, to your calling, that we would understand that as we go out into our classrooms, as we go out into our offices, as we go out into our daily life, uh, going around, uh, talking to people, interacting, Lord, that we would know that we are empowered by your Holy Spirit uh, to do your work and to be your hands and feet. And so may we do that in boldness, um, in your strength and in your power. In the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray this. Amen. Right, let's continue to worship. Amen. Would you stand and worship with us? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaking. Oh, I've never been more glad. I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down. He's faithful So why would he fail? He 
you as you go. You go in boldness, in confidence that he is with you, that he won't fail you. Today, uh, as you go, today is a, uh, what we call a Benevolence Sunday. Uh, we, we give toward our benevolence ministry um, where uh, God has just done some amazing things and allowed um, many people in our congregation to have a little bit of a leg up in um, times when they just aren't quite able to, to make it all the way through financially. And so we are grateful uh, for any gifts that you were able to give to that. Our ushers are at the, um, the back doors. As you leave, you may uh, feel free and you can always give to that online. But God bless you, everybody. I can't wait to be back here next week. We're going to be in the book of Acts once again. Let's go. Let's do it. Have a good week.